hey guys, electron pair repulsion theory is a very, very long and complicated sounding name for something that isn't actually very, very long and complicated. So here I'm going to explain it to you simply so that hopefully you can understand. If you want to test your understanding of this, the best thing you can do is practice with loads of questions and I've provided that for you over on my website. If you were just looking at the elements in water, you would think it should be linear. But it's not, it's bent. If you were just looking at the elements within an ammonia, you'd think it should be trigonal planar. But it's not, it's pyramidal. And the problem is, if you just look at the elements, you're missing a large part of the story. You're missing the lone pairs. The lone pairs that in ammonia sit at the top, and the two sets of lone pairs that sit at the top in oxygen. And these lone pairs have a big impact on the bond angle. So in a tetrahedral molecule, where we have just the, the, the elements involved to look at, in a tetrahedral molecule, we get a bond angle of 109.5. Whereas if we have one lone pair, we get a bond angle of 107. Two lone pairs, that takes our bond angle down to 104 5 degrees. Now this is because of the electron pair repulsion theory. Very, very briefly, lone pairs are more repulsive than bonding pairs. This is because lone pairs are more electronegative or electron dense than a bonding pair. Electrons want to be as far away from each other as possible. So if we have this massively electron dense area, it is going to be forcing these bonding pairs downwards. And here we have two massively electron dense areas forcing these bonding pairs down. Now as a rough, rough rule of thumb, each bonding pair or each lone pair rather reduces the bond angle by two and a half degrees. So if you can remember one bond angle on two and a half degrees, hopefully you'll be able to work out the rest. 